Woo! Been using this thing for about a month now. Getting better and better at it every single day. And, uh, you know, I, I'm learning. I'm learning a little bit. But I think there's like three things that possibly needs to be upgraded in the next uh, update. But hey, if these features are on here, you guys go ahead and let me know because sometimes I do get ahead of myself and I don't really dive that deep in these programs. But if they are on here, let me know. But if not, let's go ahead and talk about it. Bolo! All right, so yeah, I've been um, using the machine MK3 for about a month now. Shout out to Native Instruments. It's been it's been a pretty good experience. Like I'm learning the software, I'm learning the hardware. Things are getting better and better every single day. But I have noticed there's a few things that I think they should probably upgrade. You know, this is just my own personal opinion. I'm not going to spend that much time on it because you know I ain't gonna lie, the software is actually pretty cool. It works very well with what Native Instruments has going on with the machine. Now, I don't know how it is with the Machine Plus because I do not have that. But when I get my hands on that, of course, I do some videos on that. But there's a few things for me coming over from, you know, what I'm saying the NPC world into the machine world that I think that should be updated to kind of give the Native Instruments machine users something a little bit better to work with. I'm not a programmer, but, you know. I think it could be easily done. I, I don't know. All right, so number one is the most obvious thing to a lot of machine users. And a lot of machine users really don't understand why you do not have MP3 rendering. You have AIFF, you have WAVE, but you do not have MP3 even though a lot of people send their beats via MP3 using Gmail. I don't get it. I know you want to have high quality rendering and all that type of stuff. And just to be honest, I have not seen an AIFF file in like five years. Have you guys seen an AIFF file like recently? And if so, let me know in the comments because I, I have not seen one in years, literally. But yeah, most of us use MP3 files to go ahead and send our files over. And I know it's a couple other smaller files like AAC and what's it, the MPEG4, the MP4 files or something like that that Apple may use. But, you know, most of the times we just use MP3 files. Just about every other program has a way you can render it to MP3. So I think that'll be kind of cool if they add that. All right, number two, the sampler is pretty cool, but there's something that I kind of don't like. I may be reaching a little bit here, but y'all just kind of flow with me on this one. Inside of the sampler, you know, you have the auto, you have the manual, you have the split, and you have the grid on there. There's certain parameters on there that you can use to kind of slice up your sample. However, on the split and on the grid, you can only slice it up in 4, 8, 16, and 32. I understand that most samples come in either in 4 bar or 8 bar loops or 16 or 32 bar loops. I understand that. However, what about the samples that do come in in 12 bar loops, which we all know that that does not happen a lot. But you know, I still use Splice and some of you guys use Splice out there as well. And some of you guys chop up samples as well. And I know sometimes we may chop it up in other ways other than 8, 4, 16, and 32. So in this case, we don't have any extra slices that we can add in there. Unlike the MP, you can put as many slices as you want. You can put one slice, two slices, three slices, four slices, five slices. You can do as many slices to fit the sample. And in this case, with a 12 bar loop, you can't really splice it up unless you kind of like truncate it and then you have to add it and put it in there and put it in a choke group and do all this other type of stuff with it. But we should be able to do it with just using one sample. So I think just adding a few more split lines in there for the split and for the grid to where we can put as many splices in there, I think that'll be cool, you know? I don't know if that's like an immediate update or whatever like that, but I think that'll really, you know, help some people out so we won't have to sit here and keep cutting and then we have to go ahead and truncate it, then take it from that point, add it to a pad, and then we have to go take that last four or whatever, truncate that and do that. It takes a little time when you can just do that with just one sample. But we'll see. I'm I'm kind of reaching a little bit with that one. 
All right, number three. This is a biggie for me because I haven't found any tutorials. I haven't found anything on this. And if there is a way to go ahead and do this, it needs to be a lot easier because I, I haven't found anything on this. Now, inside the program, they do have an auto time stretch on here where you can splice up the samples, make it into like a four, eight bar, 16 bar loop. Put it on in there and it'll auto detect the sample. And I think that's really cool. However, what I have noticed is when I do go ahead and chop up the samples, maybe I might get an eight bar loop and I'll chop it up into the eight pads and I'll go ahead and make my own little chops and stuff like that. I cannot time stretch those chops once I put those chops in, even with the choke group and everything else. Now I could be wrong, maybe there's a way to do it, but as of right now, I haven't found anything online. I haven't found anything anywhere showing that you can do that. Now in the MP, you can do that. You can go ahead and say, for instance, you got a sample, you chopped it up at 120 BPM. That's the original tempo. And say, for instance, you want to speed that sample up without having to change the pitch of the sounds after you chopped it up. And you can actually do that using warp. If you guys want to learn how to do that, I might make a video, but uh, I might put that on the uh, premium side of my channel. And even in a $30 program called Beatmaker 3, which I use a lot, you can actually do this as well very easily. You can go ahead and chop up the sample into whatever order you want. Go ahead and hit that live stretch on that thing. And guess what? You can change the tempo without changing the pitch of your individual chops. Actually very dope, very dope. But native instruments, I do not see it. And I think that's something that'll help all beat makers because with all the technology that's in this program, I think that's something that Maybe you might want to add. I don't know. I don't know. All right. There it is. Love the program. Love the machine. I'm actually getting better and better at it. Learning new stuff every single day. But, you know, I did have three features that I think should be added on the next update. Definitely the rendering to MP3. Come on now. And, you know, being able to chop samples and time stretch the samples after you chop them. I, you, know, you know, I think that'd be cool. And the split. You know split the zones and that way you can have you know odd splits and stuff like that too but you guys let me know let me know in the comments if these features may be a little too much to ask for or if it's something that could be you know a valid but i hope you guys learned something from this video hope you guys enjoyed it and uh like i always say peace out